Steroid Mistakes Part 3 Labs and Studies. That's the name of today's video. Just to review, this is the third part of a four part series. Part one was the medical history. Everything starts off with history. Part two is the physical exam, including vital signs. And then you move forward into part three, which is labs and stu clinical studies. The target audience is always uh, the users and the men themselves, not to mention women, um, but it's also focused to healthcare providers as doctors. I'm sharing, giving back to the community at large in the world and showing as an expert over the last decade or so how I've developed and I'm sharing what I do. So let's get right into it here. The labs are important on every man that's using steroids and performance enhancing drugs, which there are many, is gonna be a CBC. That's a complete blood cell count. It covers white blood cells, the red blood cells, and the platelets. The most important piece is to look at those red blood cells. A lot of men end up having a process called erythrocytosis that's exaggerated and it leads to polycythemia. You can see my video on that. Next is CMP, complete metabolic panel. This is gonna be kidney and liver and sugar. Next piece, obviously kidney and liver is very important. Next piece is hemoglobin A1C. You know, I'm an internist. I focus on heart disease health. Of heart disease health, there are three things that are most important. Blood pressure, cholesterol, sugar, diabetes. The pre-states, diabetes. So this is now very big. That's the metabolic dioxide. side, obviously. You can't tease these things out from each other. They're always related. Hemoglobin A1C is gonna be the last 90 to 120 day average sugar. This is so important for everyone in the world to understand this. Next is a lipid, cholesterol. Now, lipid panel, depending on who the man is, what the history is, family history, how much he really wants to delve into it, you can get a basic lipid panel or you can go for an advanced lipid panel. Now this is stuff that I get into because I love cardiology and I, I'm an internist though, I'm not a cardiologist. I'm board certified internal medicine. So advanced lipid panels have become very important, but you have to be able to interpret them and to understand them. So caregivers have to be careful. Basic lipid panel is fine. Urinalysis, so you look at the labs, the blood, you have to look at the urine. We're looking for proteinuria and blood. These are things that should not be in a basic urinalysis. Next is the PSA, these are men. In the end of the day, I always tell everyone, in the end of the day, sir, you're gonna have issues. We all live long enough, forget steroids and testosterone, heart and prostate, nothing else matters. That's the, the game ending issues and certainly quality of life issues as well. So PSA, it's a prostate specific antigen. It's a screen for prostate cancer. Again, this is, has to be done by board certified primary care doctors, internists, not to mention urologists obviously mm -hmm. understand this. This is not to be done, in my opinion, by anti-aging doctors, unless that doctor happens to be board-certified legitimate physician, a family practitioner, a, an OB-GYN that's, that's studied this well enough, so they can understand it. More for women, obviously. Don't let the gynecology word fool you. So, but this is very specific, and the, the evidence-based guidelines now say for a lot of men, depending on their history and their age, don't do a PSA, because <laughs> it's gonna get you in trouble. So I have videos on this too. TSH, thyroid panel. So a lot of men uh, have sluggishness or malaise and fatigue. It's not a complete panel unless you're measuring a, a thyroid panel. You can start off, the evidence-based guidelines indicate you can start with a basic pituitary TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone level. That's evidence-based medicine. But a lot of patients, including myself sometimes, and physicians like to see the full thyroid panel. It's beyond the scope of this video, but again, I'm trying to give the real details. Some things are basic, and then you can do it advanced. That's an advanced issue. Next, of course, is the hormones, the andrology, if you will. Total and free testosterone. Very important to measure that initially when diagnosing someone. Not so important in the future when you're just trying to measure, maintain a man on testosterone where you just want the total. This one for diagnostic purposes, you have to get a free testosterone. 
And the type of test that you do has to be a liquid chromatography type test. It has to be what's called done by a, a double, an LC, you'll see these letters, LC, MS, MS, liquid chromatography, mass spectroscopy, and they repeat that MS twice, LS, LC, MS, MS. Very important to get an accurate measurement. If you go to a standard lab anywhere in the world, you just run a total testosterone, that may not show the, the full tale. Of course, you always have to relate this to the man's symptoms and his history. And that's why we're doing this. Next piece is going to be estrogen, but estrogen is very tricky. And I'm even myself getting my head around estrogen still to this day, a decade later or so. You can measure a total estrogen, but what are the most common estrogens of a man that will aromatize either endogenously or exogenously with the steroids is going to be an estradiol level, E2. So you can get ultra sensitive. You can, again, you can go for the liquid chromatography mass spectroscopy run on a dilution twice. This is, this is the top evidence-based standard of care. And again, many men, the bro science guys have taught me this because I've asked doctors, endocrinologists, they really didn't know how valuable these things, there's no real studies on this. This is what I'm working on, trying to make this legitimate. Randomized, double blind, or placebo, forward, progress. We don't have these studies. We have meta-analysis and we have a lot of case studies and that's how we're starting. So of course, I look forward to doing some legitimate studies in the future um, and that's my ultimate goal. Okay, that's the labs. The next piece is studies. So what are studies? After you do a history, physical exam and labs, you're gonna determine what you need for studies. X-rays, you know, CAT scans, in the hospital, they have tons of equipment outside the hospital. This is outside medicine. This is clinical medicine in the outpatient venue. We're going to have uh, limited, or we have radiology services. There's two things that I do for almost every man, because I focus on the heart. Coronary artery calcium score has to happen. Cleveland Clinic, this is November 2018. The Cleveland Clinic is one of the top academic centers of excellence for internal medicine and cardiology worldwide. They just gave a blessing indicating that for a man or a person that has moderate to advanced risk factors, in addition to the standard Framingham studies, blood pressure, cholesterol, sugar, so on and so forth, body pulmetrics, um, uh, are they active, they have family history, do they smoke? Beyond that, they're recommending everyone gets a coronary artery calcium score. Do you realize this? We're here now. Why? Because it puts your risks in perspective. If you have zero calcium, you could take a breather. It doesn't give you a full breather or, or a, a blessing forever, but it's great. If you have elevated calcium score, that means your arteries, you've calcified, the endothelial is damaged with, with calcium that's hardened plaque. No one argues it. Inarguable. How do you, what's the future? What are the outcomes? How do we treat it? That's all arguable. I take a very aggressive approach for myself and for my patients, man per man. That's why patients have to come see me. So coronary calcium score. If you're a man and you're at risk, and we know steroids put men at risk for coronary artery disease, there's literature on that. That's a no-brainer now. So calcium score. Next piece, echocardiogram. That's where we do an ultrasound of the heart to check the left ventricle function, not to mention the valves and all other aspects of the heart. It's very safe, it's effective. With all these issues, they do obviously cost money, so you have to be careful with that. If you don't have insurance, we have to pick some of these. That's a hard, always a hard decision to make when unfortunately reality in the real streets is money comes into play and resources. So, and Depending on the details of the history and the man that I'm examining and his physical exam and his family history and what he desires, I do other tests. I'm an internist. It's all man per man. It's all case-based, based on the history, physical exam, and the initial lab workup. And then you keep a man under the wing and you continue to care for him as long as you can. It never ends. This is the beauty of internal medicine. It's never ending. It's a continuum. So I hope this helps. Thank you all so much. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. 
and I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy.